everyone. Welcome to the Noonan Race Engineering YouTube page. Today we're going to go through a, a piston and rod rack for an engine that's come in for service. We're going to go through all the steps that we use for uh, going through a used set of pistons and rods, our inspection methods, what they tell us, and uh, how a racer at the racetrack could use some of these indications and tools to identify what's going on inside their engine and talk a little bit about how some things are related, what associated components like the wrist pin wear in the piston and how that affects the connecting rod. So we're gonna dive in real quick and, and get into some of those parts. So as you can see, Jamie's already got the rods and pistons out of a, a used engine that's came into the shop for freshening up. So he's gonna take everything apart, take all of the piston rings off. This engine has had a fair amount of runs, so the piston rings are, are pretty much ready for service. That's why you'll see him rotating them off. Normally, if you're trying to protect the rings, you'll want to use like a piston ring expander tool to make sure that you don't spiral or put any kind of weird torsional load on the ring. Here, we're twisting them off. They're going in the trash. Everything's getting brand new stuff. We'll get all the rings off, take all the wrist pins out. Big part of this is being organized. Keep the piston with the rod it came off of. That includes the wrist pin. Keep everything together. That way, as you're going through and analyzing all the parts, looking at wear patterns and such, you're able to put a whole story together on how the associated components were living inside the engine. So now once we get everything apart, We'll, uh, we'll start getting our gauges out, checking all of our instrumentation, make sure everything's dialed in correctly. Kind of walk you through it a little bit. So for our instrumentation, we're gonna use simply a bore gauge when we're going to measure the connecting rods. I know this is probably tough for racers to have in the trailer at the track. Strongly recommend it. You can definitely buy them online, worth having. But we're going to set the gauge basically to what the wrist pin is, diameter is. That way this is going to tell us our clearance. And Jamie's going to measure it in two different axes. So width wise and then height wise to see how the small end of the connecting rod has expanded um, or been sandwiched by the wrist pin during, during operation. The, uh, Small little fact about connecting rods and hemis is that the small end of the connecting rod is actually what tends to wear faster than the big end. You would think there's a lot of material around it and everything like that, but that is actually the, the part of the connecting rod that sees the most stress. Normally when you're servicing rods, you're doing it to prevent the small end of the rod from uh, expiring early. So. Jamie's going to come in, check all those bores, see if there's any kind of oddity there, how, how they were comparing to what we expect based on the amount of runs that this engine had. This particular set of connecting rods actually measured okay. Um, we did have one piston on the rack there that we'll do in another video talking about you know, looking at pistons and what they could tell us, but one of the pistons on this bench actually had a fair amount of skirt collapse. So Jamie's being pretty particular on the rod for it and making sure that we're, we're trying to understand why that happened uh, or what other associated components may need to be replaced other than that piston. Oddly enough, the connecting rod that he had here measured fine, the piston was hurt. So that tells us that that piston actually was damaged on the last set of connecting rods uh, before this set here. So just part of telling telling the whole story but anyway we'll, we'll check the small end come around grab our bigger dial bore gauge uh, and check the big end of the connecting rod normally there's uh, there's not much to see there but it's always worth checking all of them and making sure they're within spec and uh, from there we'll we'll continue on to the wrist pins so, but that tells me what this damage would have been done in the old set of conrods then they put conrods on in it at the race or something that's why this rod is actually okay.
Next step, we'll grab the pistons and actually measure the wrist pin bore of the pistons. Jamie's gonna do the same thing like we were doing in the small end of the connecting rod, measuring it in two axes. So once you're having wrist pin deflection, it's gonna wear the pin bores of the pistons. Um, you'll see he's actually going in quite far. We, work, we run piston buttons. Most Hemis are gonna have buttons versus a wire clip. So he's gotta go down in the board a little bit to get a good measurement. But he's gonna go through and see if within the axial height of the piston, so top to bottom, that should not theoretically be different from the width. But once you've actually ran the piston and the wrist pin is deflected, it's gonna pound the wrist pin bore out up and down. So he's checking those to see if he has any issues. You'll see Jamie's setting either a good piston towards the back, or if he's got one that he's got questions with, he's setting it towards the front. Um, that's kind of a systematic way for him to go back and check and see if there's any parts that he needs to review. He'll either double check his measurements or actually you know, find a measurement that indicates there was something wrong uh, and be able to dive into it and do a root cause analysis. After the wrist pin bore has been checked, he's going to come through and check the nominal diameter of the piston. Uh, everybody calls that DN. That's a, the widest part of the piston skirt. That's what's going to set your piston to wall clearance. On big horsepower engines, not always Hemis, I mean anything, if you have a really aggressive tune-up or if one cylinder was not happy, so to speak, then you're going to see some piston skirt collapse. So what he's going to do is compare from the original build sheet where these pistons were installed, what the piston diameters were to what they are now. And that's gonna tell if any of the skirts have collapsed over time and need replacing. So anything that's collapsed is gonna give you an excessive piston to wall clearance and not uh, allow the piston to operate correctly in the piston cylinder. So he's gonna actually identify one that had too much clearance and that's gonna get marked with an X and we're gonna review the wrist pin and other components here to see if we can identify a problem. So here we've got a little, it's a V block with a dial indicator on top of it that we use to check the pin straightness, the wrist pin straightness. So you'll see Jamie stick the pin in there, the gauge will ride on the top of the wrist pin and then it'll rotate the pin around. And you'll see on one of these, the needle will actually move a little bit. Very, very minute. Some of them, they don't move at all. You don't want them to move at all. That tells you that your wrist pin is true and flat. Not bent, I'm gonna give you any kind of uh, issues on your next service. This is just a really great tool to have in the trailer that's available online. We don't typically sell them. If you call the shop, we'll help you find one. This is something great to have in the trailer for you to look at your spare rack of pistons in between races to make sure that your wrist pins are healthy. Very, very quick and easy tool to use. Yeah, but here's the one where you're gonna see the wrist pin move. You'll see the needle go up and down and that's, that's indicating a bent wrist pin. That'll come out of the piston that had the damaged piston skirt. You'll see Jamie set it to the side. The rest of them that are measuring smooth and the dial's not moving, they'll go back on the rack, ready to go for the next service. All right, guys, well, we appreciate you seeing this piston rod teardown video. We're gonna go through and show you how to put it back together here in the next video and talk about what we're seeing on the piston skirt. So stay tuned, we'll have some more content for you.